Hello everybody, it's your girl Connie Kenneth and welcome back to my channel. Uh, I hope you're good. I hope you're enjoying your week and yeah, that you know, you're ready to for some ride, you know, because this reaction will be something, okay? So this morning I was just on my social media and if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you follow me. And I came across a very interesting topic from this for wonderful women. And I was like, you know what? I need to react to this one because I love when the vibe is positive. I like it when, you know, women are expressing themselves and speaking the, the, the you know, the mind. And I'm like, finally, you know, somebody is saying something about uh, some issues that, you know, that we need to normalize. So that's the title of today's reaction videos is we need to normalize. So let's hear what these ladies have to say. Let's go. Finding yourself, I think there's two different methods. There's not Julia's method, which I admire very much, which is she dips her foot everywhere. She's tried. Oh. I mean, she's the one who showed us you can quit a job. Me, I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, she's tried. And then there's someone like me who I feel like I've sort of fallen oh. into. Oh. Yeah, I, I was very into system. The and then I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh okay. Hi, Hi guys. guys, welcome to our channel. <laughs> Right, so if I get it right, so this channel, um, so these four ladies actually, um, how do you say, animate this channel. I mean, all four of them. Okay, they look fantastic. So nice to meet you, ladies, and I'm really looking forward to reacting to more of your videos because I like it when women know what they're talking about. I love it when you know we, you know, we just bring things to the table and say things as they are. So let's see. Okay. Hi guys, welcome to our channel! Yeah, they're so pretty. Hi hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Over 25! Right, okay, so that's the name of the YouTube channel, it's Over 25, so let's go. <laughs> if it's your first time on this YouTube channel and you've been watching and not subscribing, just subscribe it helps us we're on the road to 100k okay right. i think at this point we are we should very, be very very close <laughs> By the time actually you are you know but when i was when i watched your channel at this moment in time you're over 100,000. so good job i mean i took if you should have i hope so i hope so yeah. and we know it because we got it in our stats guys mm. a lot of you watch the episodes but you don't subscribe because you're like you don't want to commit just commit. Right. And you know what? It's free. I, I'm telling you statistics on my side as well. Tell me. People are watching my videos but you're not subscribed. So please support a girl. Go to the channel as well and, you know, just support them. I mean, it's free. It will not cost you a dime. Okay? So just go ahead and support YouTube creators because, you know, they spend a lot of time, you know, creating, editing, this and this and that. So go ahead. Feel free. Hey, just commit. It's free. Anything really? and if you don't want to be notified on your phone, you can mm -hmm. see you don't have to turn off the mail. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then for us it helps us with our numbers. It helps yeah. us a lot um in this space. Mm. So please, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, and if you like this episode, at the, at the end of the episode, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, and please share. Right. We'll talk about some heavy, heavy, heavy S H I T. Right. Do the same. Share, 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 share. Mm. Um. <laughs> So, today we're discussing something, let me just talk about the theme of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Normalizing things. Normalizing things in our lives. There was a huge trend, I think it was... the smoky eye. Ooh, the makeup is on point, girl. Wow. Last year. Normalize. Yeah. <laughs> normalize. 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 Yeah. Normalize. 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 Normalize not having, you know... Six-inch yeah. nails. Yeah. Normalize wearing flats to the club. Mm -hmm. Normalize women not having to cook. Mm -hmm. Normalize, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And what really inspired this conversation was that, and also the fact that we are now women in our thirties. We are no longer in our twenties, mm -hmm. and the certain things we feel like. So I just noticed the girl on the, you know, in red is holding a glass of, you know, a glass of beer. I guess. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. I tell you. We're expected to do or achieve, but it hasn't come to us. Or maybe we just don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's not in our minds. Mm -hmm. You know, all opinions or all, all, all things that are expected, I, it's an expectation that starts from 
uh, one person, then it becomes a group of people, and then right. everybody needs to follow suit. Yeah. Mm. But then we are all born with individual desires, right. individual paths, mm-hmm. individual traumas, right. individual upbringing. So we cannot all be the same. At by thirty, this should have happened. Mm. Or should yeah. Have well, where's right. the fun in that? And I feel it's very important to break down those expectations from people and just just be yourself. You know, just do you because by the end of the day. Uh, it's your life. You only have one. By the end of the day, um, nobody else will be unhappy except yourself. So let's normalize being um, being unique. Let's normalize being um, an individual because I feel like we always tend to fit in into a mold, you know, and I feel it's not the right attitude. But I guess we get that as we grow older and you realize, hey, what? I have to stop living for myself. Because when you grow up, you know, we are, um, how can I say, we grow up in a mold where the society makes us believe, and of course, through our parents, our upbringing, the school, that you have to do things in a certain way. You know, you have to, uh, you know, go to school if you're in this religion, and that's the life, um, and, and so on. You have to get married. It has to be a traditional marriage. And, you know, we have all this things that are already set up of the, the way how we're supposed to live our lives. And then when you tend to use a different route, then oof, you become um, the weird person. You know, everybody just gives you a label like, oh my gosh, she has changed. She's different. She's this and that and that. And I feel it's unfortunate because we are individuals. The society has changed. Women are educated. Uh, you know, uh, you can find men today are helping their wives and so on. So we should normalize. There's so many things to normalize. So let's see what the ladies have to say. But just it's okay to be different. It's When you look at all the leaders, like the, the prominent people in this world, why are they prominent today? Uh, the reason being they're different. And, and I feel it's okay to be different. It's even a unique thing to be different. Okay, so... Don't be ashamed of being different. It's okay. Yeah, well, yeah, man. What did you say? This should have happened. Or should yeah, have happened. Well, where's the fun in that? Well, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. That. So that's what we're talking about. Things that we would like to normalize. Um, and the point of this episode is not necessarily to give a solution, but to spark conversation mm-hmm. around these issues. So we have selected a few items that we are very passionate about of uh, topics, not topics, but points mm-hmm. that we are very passionate about mm-hmm. around this theme of normalizing. Mm-hmm. And I will start with one and I will allow you guys to jump in mm-hmm. with your mm-hmm. thoughts, feelings, ideas, and opinions. No okay. Let's so, go. The opinions in this episode thoroughly reflect <laughs> the opinions of what it's like. So the first one is a bit heavy. But I'm excited. I like to. I like to go in hard. Go in hard. <laughs> normalize. <laughs> normalize. Normalize. Yeah. Normalize finding yourself in your thirties or beyond the age All of right. thirties. Mm. Uh, Let me just say something about that before they give their opinion. Um, I feel we have so much pressure. This is t- especially today with the social media. There is a lot of pressure going on, um, in the sense that you must be this before thirty. Okay, you must know what you're supposed to do with your life. You must have a job, a nine to five job for that matter. Today, you know, young people are making a living out of social media. And so there's a lot of pressure as well. Like, oh my goodness, I want to be like this girl. I want, I want her hair. I want her eyes. I want this and that and that. And I feel it's okay if you do not know what you want to do at 30. Let me tell you, in my profession... I see so many people and myself, you know, I'm in my late 30s and I'm like, oh my goodness, we, it's life is a constant journey that you need to, we keep on changing, we keep up, you know, um, we, 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 how can I say that? We evolve as human beings, you know, there's a problem. If you're the same person at 10, at 20, at 30, at, if you are the same person, then there's a problem. We change, you know, as human beings. And it's okay if you reach 30 and you don't know what you want to do. Life is a journey. Just keep exploring things, uh, be it career-wise, 
how whatever the case may be but just keep exploring you will end up finding something that you want to do and then once you find or once you reach your dream you have higher expectations as well you want to go higher still so it's life it's a journey so stop putting so much pressure on yourself oh my goodness just stop it and i'm happy that we're having this conversation because i feel young people need to know this you know because the society we live in right now it's too much pressure and it's okay if you're in your 20s in your 30s and you're it's life that's how it is we need to grow and we'll keep growing until you're 80 90 you know um because i am just gonna start it so you yeah. guys can pick up the the whole usually you're told when you finish uni first of all when when you're 18 first mm-hmm. of all hey let me just start right. you go to school you're told what to do until you're 18 mm-hmm. then within three months or even a month when your result, by the time your results come out you should know what you want to start right with. you should have known in high school what you want to do without any exposure into the work market mm-hmm. stock market mm-hmm. yes so whatever you do in uni is supposed to be now the blueprint for the rest of your life in terms right. of career yeah and the whole thing but it, it's not practical for everybody it's practical for a select group of people mm-hmm. but what of those what of those who it's not practical for yeah, yeah. so normalizing finding yourself in your 30s right. what does that look like mm-hmm. you know you know like i i feel like i'm more aware of this finding yourself in your 30s because of the ones behind us the people in their 20s who seem to have their shit all together right. but i feel like for me that's a very important point because that's the thing. I feel like today the, the, the young people in their 20s have nothing to do with us when we were in our 20s. The young people today in their 20s, most of them have their shit together. You know, they're doing stuff. They're having fun. They're going places. They, they're they self-confident. The couples, when you look at the way the couple is, you're like, wow, people are communicating, you know, and taboos are, you know, they're cr- kind of like, breaking down all the taboos and people are moving forward like that i understand 100 percent what you're saying and i agree with you like it's crazy i feel like most young people today in their 20s they have so much um going on already you know compared to our generation in my 20s mm-hmm. i was just kind of doing what you're supposed what to, to do, do. Yeah. Right. um the course that i took in uni i was kind of nudged towards it mm. Then after that, we're just looking for jobs that can pay. Right. Not necessarily, this is what I'm passionate about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I got into a certain kind of job market, and that's just where I found myself floating around uh, mm-hmm. for the rest of my 20s. Mm-hmm. There's also a group of young people in their 20s mm-hmm. who don't have their shit together, mm-hmm. and they are looking at other people in their 20s right. who look like they have their shit together. Mm-hmm. And they're like, Ooh, wow, the shirt is African and dope. Right, and guys, on this channel, I'm so happy that Af- the African narrative is finally, like, finally being told by Africans, and period. So, I love your shirt. Love it. Oh my God, I need to already be working, have my own house, have a business, become a millionaire like mm-hmm. Kelly Jenner in my early 20s. You know what I mean? Right. Like, there's a lot of pressure. In fact, I think the pressure is mm-hmm. a lot mm-hmm. on them. It's yeah. a mix. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. very woke. They're very like I'm in I'm in my journey, but mm-hmm. also there's pressure. There's right. pressure. They have a pressure that yeah, with all the social media stuff, you want to have the same thing as this person who's made it, who's making millions, and so you would just put a lot of pressure. And so that's why you find the young people maybe in the twenties who still don't have their shit together. They um they tend to to disperse. They're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So yeah, it's I feel there's a lot of pressure due to the social media. But, you know, social media is great because a lot of young people today are making a living out of social media. But this is not, especially our parents, they don't really understand the vibe around social media. But guys, if you can go for it, it's um, it's a good, it's a job. It's it's a job. Us guys didn't have, yeah. because we're not seeing where I get my fika up. Yeah. Me, I'd only see you on the weekend. Yeah. Then I'm like, hey, what are you guys? What are you guys? Yeah. 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 And then now the world is so much more globalized. It's TikTok and stuff. People are seeing all these kids getting rich on crypto. And they're like, why isn't that me? Why? I can't afford this. For me, what I would add to that is like, uh, just remember, basically, every human is still learning. There's no way you can know who you are at that right. time. There's no way you can know who you are at 20. There's no way you can even know who you are at even 16. But there's always mm. more to discover about yourself. Right. The more people you meet, 
the more you morph into the next, into who you're really supposed to be. So, right. it's really, can you really say that this Shiko in the next year, 10 years no. is Shiko? No, no, not really. Even no. us as women, the many women who are inside us, the woman at me at 20, at 30, at yeah. 40, it will not be the same person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it applies to men as well. So right. Life is a learning, like you're growing, you're learning. You can never ultimately reach. It's a constant journey, absolutely. It's a constant journey evolution. And, you know, the, the better you become, the you know, the more you want to, to change and you go according to how life is taking you and your goals keep growing, evolving, and it's normal. It's okay. You're acting. This is not an ultimate, uh, fullest potential. Right. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nothing like that. Just to add on to what Lona has said, for me, in my 30s, what I've come to discover is I'm unlearning mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. I'm unlearning Ooh, a lot. I, you can say that, girl. My goodness, I feel that. I feel that. It's just like I'm learning all the beliefs that we've had since we were born. All the false beliefs that we've... You know that you have to go to school you i mean if you don't if you don't go to university then you you're like you're nothing um that you have to have a nine to five job that you can't quit your job when you want to that you must have a boyfriend or you must i don't know all those things we need to unlearn them because like um like the lady said in the beginning i'm sorry i don't know their names i'm so sorry about it but um she said that we are individuals and for you to discover yourself as an individual, then you need to go back to the drawing board. You need to unlearn so much. It's painful because you grow a skin that has been there for years. And then when you get to your 25, you know, when you're 25, 30, then you have to peel off all that, all those things that you, you grew up knowing and believing that was the truth. It's very, very tough. It's very, very tough. But it's worth it because I feel that's where life actually begins once you just unlearn all those things and you start doing you. Period. Okay. Ah, I love it. I feel like I'm with my friends right now. <laughs> Stuff I learned earlier on. I'm like, oh shit, that's that doesn't work like that. Yeah. That doesn't work like I that. That, that doesn't work yeah. like that. So me, that's what I've realized in my thirties. I'm just oh. not mm-hmm. chuja to me, son as a Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and and actually, um, I just have to give a shout out personally to Anita Nderu. There's a there's a post she had published mm-hmm. on her Instagram. I can't remember when it was this year. Like, I've really looked for it. I can't find it. And I think she was I think she was celebrating her birthday or talking about being finding ten, turning thirty. And she was like, we need to normalize finding yourself in your thirties. Finding yourself in your fifties, you know, right. starting yeah. a new career in your forties. Yes. Um, yes. And 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 what does normalizing do? It removes shame. Right. Yeah. It removes shame. Yeah. It removes shame and fear. Mm-hmm. You know, like for example, I can be like, oh. I, I, Let know. me tell you, the best thing that you can ever do, the best things in life are on the other side of fear, and that's how I had to unlearn some things because you feel like. Oh, you know, for a long time, people should say, oh, but you have to be careful. So there's a lot of people install fear in you and then you stop yourself from doing stuff that you want to do. And I feel that the moment that's how that's my mindset right now that I had to learn in my 30s is when I feel fear, I just evaluate the situation. I adjust if I have to, but I do not lose focus because the minute you lose focus, then fears take over, takes over everything. And then you just stagnate and your life, you just, you're just unhappy all your life, you know? And so I, I understand fully that, you know, everything and I want you, if there is something you should get from this point, number one is the best things are on the other side of fear. And you will realize, you, you know, you will look back and like, okay, that's it. I mean, that's it. That's all, you know, and you will be so proud of yourself, you know, by doing things that make you, um, that scared you before. And you will be so grateful for having done them because you'll realize that, you know, you've overcome fear, which is a major setback in all our lives. Okay. Well, I've started taking a, a sewing class. Mm. But then you you said you have to tell, you know, you're so scared of telling guys. Yeah, because there's a, there's, yeah there's, mm-hmm. a, there's a stigma attached to, to that. Yeah. And it's only 
it's only it's only okay if it's a side thing, yeah. uh, you know, and not uh, the and not the main thing. Mm-hmm. But on the other side, let me tell you, if you if you if um, I always that's how I operate. Okay, I personally never tell people my business until it's done. I do not tell people my business until it's done. And this I had to learn it the, wrong, the I mean the hard way. So this is why. The thing is when you start telling people your project, what you want to do, how you want to do it, you have the vision. The vision is yours. It's not their vision. And so we have like high expectation expectations expecting our family to support us, our husbands to support us, our friends to support us. And more often than not, they discourage us. And so that installs doubt in ourselves, in our projects, in our vision, and so on. So I am a strong believer that it's very important to let the actions speak for themselves. Do not tell everybody your business unless it's somebody who has the same mindset as you as you have and someone who wants to who is also building and somebody most important that you look up to because you can see that they're moving forward they're motivating you and you know if you talk to them about something then it will not be like negative criticism but on 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 the contrary it's going to be you know like you know um uh, you know, uh, what would you say, constructive criticism that will help you and will help you build, you know, and to become a better person. So they will not let you down. They will find solutions with you, help you building and so on. So I feel it's okay. If you want to do something, just keep it to yourself, do it and let the, and let the results speak for themselves, you know. You know, and it's not only a problem in Kenya, it's a problem all across the globe mm-hmm. because there's certain milestones you're supposed to have achieved. You know, I think the, the, the boomers, there's an era they came from, from mm. their parents had, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> their parents, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> their parents, their parents were, they lived through the depression. You know, I don't know. For us, our life, life is different. different. Life yeah. is different. But yeah. then, different. They, they, we've inherited so many mindsets right. mm. that, yeah. that mm. we are, that mm. just don't fit apply to us, mm-hmm. but you see these are people who we look up to. They were they yeah. were formed our yeah. they are not who taught us. I think hence they are learning that they are learning. Really yeah. 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 You guys yeah. remember that very old guy who went back to school at eight eight? I think that was the first mm. time that was the movie. Wow. I was I was like, oh my God. Mm. Yeah. You can go to school at eight eight primary school. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Random. Mm. So many people Yeah. Yeah, it's never too late. It's never too late. So many women who raise their babies, then they are gone, then they finally go back get their degree. Yeah, mm. because they couldn't at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. And for me, my challenge is to, for to the people who receive that information. Yeah. Mm. Even me, somebody can tell me, and I'll be like, ah, oh, this guy, at you're starting to do photography, and you're no. yesterday. What? Yeah. yeah. You know. So the, the the thing, the challenge is for them. If you're the person being told this thing, yeah. Do not criticize. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Don't criticize. Don't give right. that feedback. You know me. Okay, I, I think that's good for you, but don't mm, do that. Yeah. You keep, it's so easy. Really, you can say one thing to somebody, yeah, and you completely squash their their dreams. Yeah, yeah. yeah so people like for me, yeah, like finding yourself in your thirties, like I, I mean, my career, <laughs> my career path has been like this. Mm. <laughs> but I knew for sure that the career I was in is not what I wanted. To do. Mm. But I didn't have an alternative. Yeah, it was by default. Yeah, most of us do that. I didn't know any letter, mm. so I had to, and I had to make money. I mean, the life needed to. Stay on in my life. Yeah, like yeah. I, I saw this TikTok for this guy. You know that TikTok sound that's blown up now for the summer international to the side. He's a communication student. Okay. During COVID, he had to move back to his parents' house and Aquana Mwele Keo. Then all of a sudden, that job came through for that cartoon. Mm-hmm. And it was given that uh, the the, the what do you call it? That was his, the cartoon, that, that, was, role. that was his role. Mm-hmm. And the blue cartoon, it's called, um, it starts with a B, I'll tell you, I can't remember right now. But that cartoon now, um, that cowboy, if you blue up on TikTok, and it's like, you guys, this is yeah. So basically, he was saying, like, you have no idea what life has been. Yeah. You really don't. And in finding yeah. yourself, I think there's two different methods. There's not, Julia's method, which I admire very much, which is she dips her foot everywhere. She's oh. trying. Oh. I mean, she's one. That's me. That's me right there. You know, I never let the um, my failures uh, stop me from going forward because it's okay to try things. You know, just try because it works. If it doesn't work, try another one. Try another one and keep trying because 
one day for a fact you will find something that will be you know your right shoe your right fitting you know and so just keep trying and i agree i'm like that as well oh sure that you can quit a job mm, yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, she- i quit a job me too i did i just said bye why because i wanted to start my own business some people will tell you make sure you have a plan b make sure it works before you quit i was like no because i needed to concentrate my energy you know my full energy and being a mom myself i couldn't afford to to just do it like one hour here and there i needed my 100% energy concentration focus on creating my business and today i'm like okay girl okay so i'm very happy with uh, having created my business and things are growing you know so yeah just go for it she's tried and then there's someone like me who i feel like i've sort of fallen okay into yeah i, I was very into system them, and then i'm like oh okay, oh, okay. <laughs> let me tell you you'll stumble until you stop stumbling and you right. know you stop stumbling when you start listening to that inner guidance system mm-hmm. which for me i've always said it has to be god because who is it telling mm-hmm. you oh, what is pulling you to work pottery and not baking right youtube content creation mm-hmm. and not sewing you know what mm-hmm. is that there's something there's something right and let me tell you uh, another thing um uh, personally, I hear so many people who just wait up upon God to to do something for them. So they just sit comfortably in their sofa and just wait for God to open doors. Okay. I mean, I'm not saying that it's okay, you know, especially when you're a Christian. I pray to God and I always ask him to open my eyes to, you know, to show me stuff. But you need to go into action, baby. You need to go into action action you know because god has given you the brains god has given you everything possible you're in the right conditions to do whatever that you want to do he's like listen you have life you know you touch your pulse you know your pulse is you know it's there you know you're in perfect health i've you know i've given you good parents you have education you have this and this you have the brains you and what are you waiting for? You prayed for them. You have them. So what else are you waiting for? You just have to move into action, constant action, and move forward and keep pushing and pushing and pushing. If you find a roadblock, then you break that door. I don't know. Just break the door. Or try and look for solutions. And, you know, and just keep going. Just keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And I'm telling you, the breakthrough will happen one way or another and do not give up decide to take what to do that as you may yeah. mm-hmm. you know but like for me i'm just like if you have a strong pull towards something exploit yeah mm-hmm. i don't say jump leave your job yeah mm-hmm. because you can't leave I, mean, I have i have a whole opinion about just quitting i don't think mm-hmm. you should just quit like by the time you do something you have to also be okay with certain decisions that you mm-hmm. make because yeah. it's a factor yeah, yeah. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. So, so normalize. No, I think normalize finding yourself. Normal, normalize being in your thirties and and like the other day, somebody, even somebody who on a campaign I'm working on, she just she wrote on the group that we are in on WhatsApp. But she, oh, I've, I've left this agency. You guys are the best. Mm-hmm. But it's somebody I would I really bonded with. So I call her. I'm like, sis, what are you? Where are you going? Mm-hmm. And she's like, I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. And she's much younger, like 24, 25. And I'm like, you guys, your generation, although it's our generation, but I'm like, yeah. Yeah. ah, you could never say no. nothing. No, no. you have to no. actually no. this thing I'm doing, even after lie. Mm-hmm. You, it's okay to do nothing. Right. It's okay to do nothing. Keep right. like, mm-hmm. Yeah, normalize, normalize that. And, and, and what normalizing means, the people who receive that information. Create yeah. a community around somebody who is doing nothing or seems lost. Yeah. Make them feel like they have support. Yeah. And when they right. have that 100%, what they'll find something. Yeah. Right. They will. Because yeah. they're not being put on this act to fail. Yeah. Yeah. The reason people fail is because they don't have support. Yeah. Yeah. So that is what I think. Mm-hmm. Like everyone who has failed, I feel like it's just there's no support. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they start to believing that they are failure. But because they can't do the thing that they hate, they, they have not, they, their heart is not there. They stay in this limbo. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Give yeah. somebody support and yeah. you see how they're like. And it's right. so sad that it's not their parents. Yeah. Yeah. Because even then, they didn't have the support yeah, yeah. yeah so mm-hmm. like right now there's so many of us who are walking around damaged but yeah. at the end of the day you're like yeah. okay they need the best support they 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 had, like, yeah. but, but we have the opportunity to make things to better i that. guess yeah. you know, but and let me tell you i wouldn't say our parents didn't know better i would say our parents had to fight for the girl child to have access to education to vote to 
you know, to have access to property, to work. So our parents, that was, they had different battles. And I feel that, you know, the, the, and every generation will have different battles, you know. Our parents, their parents did their job, you know. And I feel that it's our turn to move forward, you know, when it comes to the, to the woman cause and also for the young generation. And just to say, hey, it's our turn and this is how things are done today. And just go with the flow and with the society and how things are happening today. So I feel... Every generation has different battles. When you look through back into history, it's it's the case. It has been the case, and yeah, the, it's it's. You can see we are already comparing the twin, the, the young people in their twenties, and for us in our thirties. You see, and the the gap is not so big. So you can just imagine how far our parents have come compared to their parents. So it's just different battles, you know. But yeah. Yeah, I really want people to take what you said about um being on the receiving end of such of such whatever because even when I think about so not over the age of thirty, but when I think about um first pregnancy when uh she decided to quit his job. Mm-hmm. My first thought was not to be supportive. Mm. My first thought was just like how what? What are you doing? Is yeah, this really a good idea? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, are you sure you can make money here? So I think you just create so much doubt in the person's mind. Right. Probably that might not have been there. Right. That's just that's what I wanted to But say. I don't yeah. think I have something to add to you that. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a podcast I listened to uh. about that. Well, I ca- I can't remember the podcast. I listened to like ten a day. But this guy, this there's a research that was done about partners. Mm-hmm. How your partner mm-hmm. can actually oh. be or make or break in, a, right. in your success like, okay. so partner- right I agree 100 percent and that's why we should also normalize um, women choosing the right partner and not just and not just accepting whoever you know you see what I mean I feel that young people today need to know how to choose a partner depending on your goals your objectives and not just physical stuff like oh my god he's hot oh my god this let me tell you a rose flower is always beautiful when it's broad and then it fades away and that's how beauty just beauty is temporary but the brains are there to stay okay so that's the thing when you're choosing your partner make sure you choose somebody with whom you share common goals uh, someone who's open-minded someone who has a vision Someone who has friends who build him, someone who respects, of course, his family, and because all those things dictates the, the the kind of relationship that you're going to have in the future if you build a family with a person. So if your partner is like every time you talk about a person, like, oh my goodness, what will you do? There is no money. There is no this, this, this. Then, girl, you will never, ever, ever come to 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 build your dreams and your visions because they will always hold you down because the partner is supposed to uplift you but that one the one who does who doesn't have goals who only thinks about uh, uh drinking and with his friends and and so on and so forth say bye girl so your partner plays a huge role in who you are who you're going to be and in your project so i agree so they, they interviewed partners who I mean, couples where their partner was supportive mm-hmm. and couples where their partner was a bit doubtful of this person's business venture mm-hmm. or whatever. And even the, past, the people who were still doing what they wanted to do, but they had partners who were a bit pessimistic, mm-hmm. they used words like, maybe, okay. uh, maybe I'll do it, maybe I'll right. expand, maybe I'll whatever. Okay. Yeah, not because of certain. They're not, they don't have that certainty and it affects your day-to-day, right. how you run your business, the of course. decisions you make, the risks you take in your business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you see, it's yeah. so important who you have around you. Your support system is yeah. so fucking right. important yeah. to your development. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. I think something um, and more. it's one of the things um, I've been unlearning in my 30s, and that is communicating how I communicate. Mm-hmm. What I try to do nowadays is communicate how that person hears. Mm-hmm. So like you and Shiv, you're a man and woman, you communicate very differently. Mm-hmm. So yeah. him, when he's saying, I quit my job and I want to do this, and yeah. you tell him, so you, what you got from that is that I'm not feeling secure enough. Yeah. 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 But how yeah. he received your message for what is happening is she doesn't don't trust me. Yeah. Right. So we need to normalize 
communicating the way that person receives messages. If we yes. always we always talk about right. love languages, yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you know someone that will avoid a lot of arguments. Yeah, I agree. Likes gifts and whatever, and you and you're actively doing that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you know someone, it is Julia who teaches me this a lot. She always says, Ivy, you're normally so quick to just move on. But me, I'm still processing. Mm-hmm. So I stopped. I stopped saying, okay, let's move on. The fight is finished. I, I gave it time. Uh-huh. So we need to learn how to communicate the way that other person is receiving uh, the right. message. Yeah. Yes. Hey, yeah. okay. The whole <laughs> <laughs> thing. Thank you for watching. 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 Let's go to the next point. Um, Normalize having creative careers. Hello. You know, creative careers for a long time, people have never taken that seriously. You know, what you're you're a singer? Wait a minute, you're an artist. Uh okay, you paint, you act. Okay, when will you find a job? And I feel it's the same thing to do with social media. What do you do? I do social media. No, but I mean your profession, your career. What do you do? Like, I do social media. Little do people know that, you know, those are jo- works. Those as are professions as well. And people make a whole lot of money. The bug people get from that is good. So it's okay to normalize artists. <laughs> warning. Trigger warning. It's literally a conversation on its own. Yeah. yeah. It's the whole book I'm reading. I have a, my, my, my book for the book I'm reading right now. It's called The Artist's Way by Cameron, Julia Cameron. Julia Cameron. Hi, Julia. Synchronicity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't, we can't, we, I can't even. There's too much to say. Yeah. yeah. So I'll leave, let you guys talk about normalizing having creative careers. Yeah. In this hour, in this hour, Kenya. In this hour age. Like, <laughs> in this hour age. I'll just say one thing. Um, still, the other day. My mom keeps asking me because, uh, <laughs> like, she just asked me. Still, like after a while, I thought now that I'm married to Tim. It's like, hey, mama, I'm about to do my kazi. Like, she just, she doesn't understand. Like, she understands it because I show them the proof of what yes. I'm doing. But it's still, I guess, not sunk in that. Oh wow, I tell you, what on a fanya kazi social media? Exactly what I say. In her head, it's still. Ingrained that mm-hmm. okay, like I'm not work. working for anyone. I'm not. Yeah. So she yeah. still, she still asked me the other day. I'm like, guy, hey, mom, we're still asking this question. I was, it actually caught me off guard. I was like, oh, okay. you get. Even then, I guess yeah. I'm kind of learn, I'm learning a lot. Yeah. Okay. My family has been extremely, extremely supportive. Oh, um, the people who are not supportive was probably strangers and colleagues when I quit my very well paying nine to five job right and initially guys i don't know if you guys remember when i wanted to quit i wanted to quit to do over 25 mm, i don't know if you yeah. guys remember i was like yeah. i kept feeling like i'm sleeping on a giant and yeah. you know oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Busy. i kept saying, that, I kept saying yeah. you know i want to quit do over 25 and i'll never forget this a person was just like just that right you just want to do that like that's what you want to do <laughs> and then another one was like oh you know you just can't quit the way julia saying you just can't quit you have to put yourself into a transition I got a lot of barriers, and I think I got a lot of barriers because people were not understanding that you can yeah. have a career in the in the arts. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. In China, yeah, in China, there are influencer incubation companies. Oh. Like where oh. your your that's a good business idea. Brought in as a potential, you're in your twenties mm. and you're you're trained. you're trained. Wow. On how to influence, how to speak, how to represent a brand, how to dress, how to you know wow. address a, 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 a group of people. I, I, I don't know. I felt I. For me, my problem was I, I got a lot of, you know, pushback when I said I want to quit and do this. And That's why you should not mm-hmm. say. I, I am very strong okay. on protecting, protecting, not even your energy, but protecting new ideas. Mm-hmm. So let's say, me, because I paint, let's say, for example, but yeah. painting can be, I want to be this, I want to be that. Something that's new, that you have not yet, we need a backbone. I told you guys... I agree, hundred percent. For it, mm. I mean, you can defend it. It's a baby. Right? Mm. Don't go and give your baby to somebody who is not ready to take it, to, mm. to to nurture it. Mm. Don't, mm. don't. Mm. And this is my thing. Um, there's people who give you criticism. You know, because I used to. Say, but you know, Julie, I'm just giving you positive criticism. Is it? What is it called? Yeah. Positive, positive. criticism. Yeah. 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 Constructive. 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 That's yeah. the one. I knew it was not positive. <laughs> Constructive criticism is one where even when they tell you. Mm-hmm. Like, anyway, yeah, you feel like this valuable feedback yeah. that you can incorporate yes. yeah. right. that thing. 
other people they project yeah they project, they project and they give you criticism it might even look like even your own parents can be like no but you know i don't think you should do this because are you, are you you don't you shouldn't you practice until you're better before mm-hmm. you dive into it yes. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is that possible? Even your career when you started, did you dive into your career yeah. when you were good at it? No. So you started yeah. and learned. Yeah. yeah. So it's also through experience. Yeah. So, 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 so it's very so so yeah. For me, I'm I'm like just make sure there's some things you should protect. Try to identify the people in your life who you know it should not be many. There's some yeah. people who you feel right. like they can actually they got you for real. They got you. Yeah. yeah. Let me tell you, we we are an average of the five people. That we um that we associate with, you're an average. I mean, if you if your friends are like um uh, very you know ambitious people, then you will you will try and fit into that. You know, if your friends are just drunkards and just think about partying and no projects, then you become like them. Simple. And yeah, that's good yeah. advice. That's constructive. Because criticism can actually keep you doing. One person can say, and even somebody you don't even care about can just say something which you already insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like you know, I don't think you speak as eloquently, or maybe to improve your public speaking before you go and do this. Mm. And then you're like, okay, now I won't do it until because yeah. I'm not as good. Yeah. good at because I'm not as good as Julia in doing this mm-hmm. thing. You cannot start with by doing that. Yeah. 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 So that's my point. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yes, I think normalize people having creative careers. Yeah. Okay. If you don't understand it, try and figure out how you can understand it to right. support somebody in the creative. Because creative, right. the reason people, me for me, I think the reason is. A lot of mental health issues in people in the creative industry. Mm. It's not because creatives are weird and they just have mental health issues. Yeah. <laughs> it's because there's no support. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, yeah. you're constantly doubting yourself. You're yeah. constantly in a in a yeah in a no, fight. Should I do this? Should I do that? Mm-hmm. Am I good enough? Am I what? Am I what? Then you get lost. And then creativity is also not that's not, it's not structured like the office life is structured. Mm-hmm. It's abstract. So it's also very hard to explain yes. to people. Right. Uh, yes. What it is mm, that yeah. you're trying to do or trying to achieve. Yeah, yeah. we understand. Yeah. But then we, we are, how, are we, how are we being measured with mm. the ISO paradigm that nine to five to five? You see. So yeah. Yeah. And I would, I would, I would also add like all these uh, blue collar jobs, like construction workers and stuff like that. People have this mentality that um, those guys are, you know, you, they're useless because no, they're making money. They're bringing food to the table. So there is no bad job, you know, as long as you, you're making money out of it, as long as you love what you're doing, then just so be it. So let's normalize all professions, all of them, you know? Like, wait, you're free from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., but you're working at night. That's mm-hmm. not right. You yeah. work at right. during the day. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You and if anything, it's the most untapped kind of industry, and it's the one that's going to blowing up like that's where we are headed yeah do you mind us also just tell you guys examples of creative career if someone is not Mm. particularly sure so us for example Mm. we are social media Mm. that word Mm. yeah um julia was saying painting the time she was doing painting an artist music music poetry writing being a poet making a writer being a jimbo making movies yeah she's a comedian she's a comedian yeah exactly yeah and that's why i think there's so many struggling artists because people just can't seem to understand why it is you've chosen this path versus mm. the nine to five path that people Right. And yeah. And the government doesn't help them, especially comedians. Um, the government doesn't help them. Those people are influencers. They're the ambassadors, the Kenyan ambassadors, and they don't get any help. You know, they have to. They have to cry for uh, the tourism minister, for example, to notice them. They have to create a scandal so that they they just have to to say something. But yet. Nothing is done, and I think it's a pity compared to the West, where you find uh, artists, all types, okay, all creative types of art. The 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 ministers actually, you know, call them. They they come up with ideas. You know, they're. I mean, that's how it should be. That's how the government should help. Um, you know, um, create in the creative space. You know, work with them to promote the country. You know. And, yes, and Kenya does not support it. The government Thank does you. not support it. Yeah. Girl, yeah, I know. Okay, yeah, that's what I was saying. Let me give you an example. Yeah. In primary mm. school, and in my era, I was in 844. Hey, me, I was, let me tell you, you know how people, you know how people grow up and they say, this is going to be a long episode, guys, but you know how people, 
I used to envy, okay, I envy people who say, since I was young, I knew I wanted to be a journalist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Me, 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 I didn't fucking know shit. Uh, yeah. But when I really think about it, I knew mm-hmm. I wanted to be, I can't even say it. Like, I wanted to be an artist. Mm-hmm. I wanted to paint and I wanted to draw. We've spoken about this before, baby. You're the one who helped me figure out. You told me, mm-hmm. look, try and remember what you used to think about as a child. Mm-hmm. As a child. Mm-hmm. Babe, I'll never forget those. Think about so. those things. I think those one of our thoughts. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Like, those things that used to excite, excite you. But then, because they are not, even you, you don't have role models. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it's for America. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. We, I, I remember, we only, uh, the technical subjects in it for four, arts, from science, yeah. to business and, and agriculture, something like that. Yeah. 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 But then, I, me, I was only looking forward to get to class, class four, class five, yeah. so that I can do arts. Because mm. I used to see the, the, the students like in class seven mm-hmm. used to have an art room. Yeah. And me as a class three, I was nine years old, I was always in the art room at lunch mm-hmm. I just used to pass away to see what new the scooter, yeah, what new drawings mm-hmm. people have done. Right. And that's the only thing I know for sure I was interested oh. in. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. if you think yeah. of, and, and this, something, this is a realization I had like in the past year. Yeah. I was like, I remember as a kid being so eager to get to class five, mm-hmm. class four, so I can start doing art. Mm-hmm. But then when we got to that class four, five, the government removed technical mm-hmm. subjects. So now mm-hmm. it's from, removed from mm-hmm. seven subjects, mm-hmm. or is it eight subjects, mm-hmm. to five, five. subjects. Yeah. We had math, mm-hmm. English, geography, science, mm-hmm. and Kiswahili. They actually yeah. removed, they removed art. Yeah. They removed the technical subjects. Yeah. I didn't care for business. I did not care for agriculture. I did not care yeah. for science. But I was so eager. Oh, yeah. It's a pity. Do art class. Yeah. High school, when you go to high school, I finally go to do art. But the practical... The practical, so you have practical and theory. Mm. Practical um, contributes to 20% of your art grade, okay. and theory is 70%. Yet my theory book, you know how in high school your biology book, you had like 10 books from yeah. one, like 10 exercise books. <clears throat> but then the art book, I had one book. Like it was such little theory, that was 70%. Mm. 20% was That's the true. art, practical, <laughs> but, but all the, the whole time we're in class, we're either painting or drawing. Or sketching, or learning shading, or learning right. things. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like it doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So even you in your mind as a child, you start to say art is not important. Yeah. Mm. This is that. You know, it's mm. the hobby, it's the what. Right. It fucks up with your mental. Right. So you get into this. Oh my god! Like I've been quite passionate. Hey. <laughs> the heavy conversations, the individual conversations on their own. So please leave a comment if anything has touched you, triggered you. Leave a comment. Yeah. Um. The next one is normalizing. Okay. So normalizing this whole thing where we don't meet societal standards okay mm. so for example not being married yeah. at a certain age not having kids yeah. not having enough money mm. at a certain age mm. yeah. or you know yeah. Yeah. Mm. divorce Ooh, divorce mm. yeah. Yeah. traditional weddings yeah yeah another thing i had mentioned was money mm. um not being like on the same level as everybody yeah yeah, yeah. i think for me personally um again something else I came to unlearn. Uh, just because I was making a certain amount of money, I came to realize that I was a very, I was a bitch. Um, <laughs> in, I was a fucking bitch. In that if someone says, if we're uh, being invited for a plan or I whatever, yeah. you know, babe, yeah. You, yeah. you came at me once. I'm yeah. learning. I'm learning. And I'm very sorry. No, it's okay. I, I, I came to realize, what the fuck? Not everybody can afford what it is you can afford. Mm. Your lifestyle changes. Not because so, right yeah. now, my friends, mm. not having that salary, I am one who says I can't afford. Yeah. I can't do it. So I unlearned. I, I felt really bad that I felt bad. Yeah. <laughs> I felt bad that I I was what can I say? Gauging friends and people oh, based, based on, on what they can afford, where okay. they can go, yeah. what they can buy. Mm. It was a very stupid mentality. Yeah, that that's that's the, that's unfortunate. But you see, um, I'm so happy that you talk about it because it happens a lot. It happens a lot, a lot, a lot where people just stick around people who are in the in the box okay they have to fit in in the box they have to be rich they have to be this and that they have to be pretty they have to be this so one thing we tend to forget that who you are today if you're at the top today and I'm at the bottom I can always rise up okay we can always rise up, but we can also go down. So maybe I can overtake you at some point or get to your level. But by the end of the day, I guess what really matters is the friendship. You know, is this person a genuine person? Is this person someone you can look up to who can be there for you? Is the person loyal? Are they hardworking? You know, all those um, <clears throat> nice vibes that can help 
you know, they can help you uh, become a better person through your friends and thanks to your friends in a way because real friends, it can be somebody who sells, you know, maize outside. It can be somebody who who has a blue collar job like you're talking. So we should normalize having friends from all aspects of life because I believe that every person in our life is there to teach us something and we have something to learn from every person. So yeah, yeah. So that's a, a very nice point. No, it's not stupid, babe. Let me tell you what it is. When when you even you like even me at first is like when you're when you're bowling, you received a huge check. Mm-hmm. You know, you become blind to other people's problems, right. even if it's not a very big check. Yeah. There's an influx of... Uh, yeah, you just go like, hey, yeah. see, we go and... We even tend to forget where we come from. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You forget. You forget. Yeah. You forget. You forget the day you didn't have that. You forget. Yeah. You forget. when you're poor, you forget that yeah. you are yeah. once you reach yeah. it, you come back. Yeah. 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 Money yeah. comes and goes. Yeah. 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 Especially if you haven't reached that much. To understand right. that money, you shouldn't look at money that way. You really shouldn't, and that's why I am. But now. it's good that you And money is just not enough because I'm just right. like, okay, yeah, salary, never. okay, um, sinking fund, uh, uh, emergency fund, mm. retirement, mm. insurance, mm. salaries. Yeah. I'm just like, the money is right. just not enough. And, right. and, and that's the worst part about money is the next day it could be you without the money. Exactly. And then the person who you're waiting on with the money. Right. Exactly. The money. And then it's fleeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, Unfortunately, was tortured at Nayo House in Kochini. What was his name? Matiba. Matiba. Mm. Matiba. Uh, that Matiba and Matiba story breaks my heart. Mm-hmm. But Matiba's wife had done a story um, some years back. I read it in the paper, mm-hmm. and you know the family went through some huge financial, mm. you know, issues. Like mm-hmm. they lost a lot of money, and she was doing an interview with one of these newspapers, and she was like, you know, in in, in the the tone of the interview was very dreamy in a way she's just like mm-hmm. she was, she was, the way the writer described it they were sitting at some balcony somewhere and she was looking into the distance and she was saying she's like you see those birds over there i think they were somewhere next to like mm-hmm. but you see those flamingos or those birds over there mm-hmm. that's how i see money mm-hmm. one day they are there mm-hmm. you turn around and come back and right. they, they are not there they've flown away yeah she's like we had surplus we yes. had a lot yeah. When you when you're in the state of mind of having a lot, you cannot imagine not having it. Right. You can't, you know. Mm. Um, and sometimes people think and it's, they think financially it's not even at their fault. Mm. And also people who are doing well financially, you can't say it's me. Mm. I mean, the people who pa- did the right thing, they passed the exam, right. yeah, they went to school, yeah. they did, but they still haven't made it. Mm. And right. there are some days who in school they were the ballets, the mm. campers, mm. but mm. Sasa, you know, they're driving right. this car, they're living over here in this part right. of town. So it's not. Some things don't work out mm-hmm. the, the way they are they're supposed to work out. So yeah. I think we, ha- we should have compassion to people's different um, financial yes. status. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. You know, yeah. Do you think we should normalize talking about it? Like, do you yeah. think we should say me? Okay, this is my work. This is how much I make. This mm-hmm. is my work. This is how much I make. I'm, I'm really for that, especially yeah. in certain industries. Yeah. I think it's good to ask. Like, you know. Yeah. Big, how much yeah. are they giving you? Yeah. I feel like we're freer now. Yeah. 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 I think that's true. I'm like, yeah. what are you getting? Yeah. yeah. What's your rate? Yeah. What's your rate? Yeah. I think we're more open now and than when we were. As a society. That's why you need to surround yourself wisely because you're comfortable talking money with your friends because you, you, you guys are loyal to each other. You guys know that you've got um, good intention at heart and not just call somebody and then they will lie to you. You know that you can trust them. And I feel that's the, the very important to have like those solid uh, friendships with people with whom you know that you know you're building each other and you know that whatever advice you will get from them, you know it's constructive advice. So I understand it because I know in most cases uh, it's very it's taboo to actually talk money uh, with people. Money, we don't talk about money. Uh, like you don't, you don't want to let. You know, people know how much money you're making or how much money you don't have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So even me, like for me, I don't like to talk about money because I didn't grow up talking about it. I never had right. open conversation yeah, about I mean, it. I like think, oh, my mom never told me. Now I have a million in the bank. I want mm-hmm. to do this. I would see her doing shit, but yeah. just talk about money makes me uncomfortable because immediately I think of the lack of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm the lack of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it. it, it Give me anxiety, like, mm. hey, next yeah. week, next year, 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 next year
what do you call it, intelligence, uh, to know how to manage your finances as well. Because that's the thing, um, a lot of people just spend, you know, spend, spend, spend. The, they, they buy unnecessary things like the, the beautiful car. No, people should be like, have better ways of spending their money, investments and stuff like that. So you can build uh, an, an empire, you know, with your family, with your wife, whatever the case may be. But I feel that's the thing. People make a lot of money very fast. But uh, they, how do you spend your money? How, how do you use it? And that's why one day you just lose everything because you didn't really, you know, you didn't spend your money in the right way and that causes a lot of trouble. A good point about um, <clears throat> when you think about money, you think about the luck. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So that is what scarcity mentality is. Yeah. Okay, guys. So this is the last one that we should normalize. It's a little bit cheeky. It's a little bit fun, just like us. <laughs> Before you go there, I've been staring at Lona's face. This entire episode <laughs> <laughs> so juicy. I'm like, I am just waiting. I'm like, I just <laughs> Juicy thighs. <laughs> okay. okay, let's go to the cheeky one. <laughs> yeah, it's funny you say that. Yeah. It's kind of relaxing. <laughs> um, normalize not having orgasms every time you have sex. Ooh. Okay? Alright. Not mm. as a flip's hair. <laughs> <laughs> not all sex has to end with orgasms. Yeah, especially for that. women. Yeah. 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 What I would add to that is, first of all, for females, is that pressure that transfers onto the guy yeah. where you're like oh my god I didn't satisfy this woman yeah. because she never came first yeah. of all I think women still enjoy sex without coming yeah. yes, uh, but of course we would want to climax but I would say I've seen a statistic as high as 70 percent of women don't actually climax no. yeah yeah there's a very high percentage of women who do not climax and I feel that um it's just I feel again it's another thing about you know you know, we talk about love languages. We, talk, we also should know, normalize talking about the sex language. Because the way uh, you want to be pleased is not the way I want to be pleased. And I probably don't want this penetration. And, you know, so there are so many things that need that need to be normalized and, and looked at differently, especially in the bedroom. And I feel um, this is something that we should normalize. A girl, it doesn't mean that you're going to touch her and then she will, you will turn her on. No, it doesn't work like that. And men, on the other hand, he will just look at your butt and his line. His t- so it doesn't work like that. So I feel it's okay to tell young women that do not put so much pressure on yourself trying to be to perform and being the best. And, and you know, because I feel and on the other hand, men, it's okay. A girl will not climax every single time. Otherwise, if you like put that pressure on her, she will... She will act because there's so many comedians, okay? She will act as if she's enjoying it, but she's not. She just wants to please you and that's and that's it. You know, so and I feel there's also this culture of pornography where a lot of men uh, watch a lot of pornography, they they consume pornography and then it gets to a point they expect you to do the same things. But pornography is not is not real. You know, those are actors. In their real life, that's not how they go about it, okay? So I think we should normalize just telling men, I mean, there is one thing, pornography is one thing, and being with a real woman, someone you love, is another different thing, okay? So that's what I think. Via penetration. Mm-hmm. So normalize just not climax. Oh, okay, there's nothing wrong. You're not broken. Yeah, you're not broken. Yeah, Your sex is in bad. Yeah. 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 And maybe even you need to move on from that penetration into other uh, yeah. 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 The other erogenous zones yeah. Yeah. Right. Like female or male body. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nonsy, even to add on to that, the way you're saying it puts pressure on the man. Mm. I feel like it also puts pressure on us as the babe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about all the uh, all those guys who, all those girls who just keep I don't know yeah like she said the morning school like no you don't have to I mean I'm telling you that's only in porn you know in porn uh, films you know because when a woman just screams like that it just it's it doesn't 
I don't know. So let's just normalize. It's okay. You can enjoy your thing without screaming, okay? doesn't mean that you've orgasmed it doesn't it doesn't and normalize a girl who doesn't squat you know so ooh, this conversation is hot it's hot in here yeah, yeah, I, I don't think my come out but it, it helps it helps mm, it get the, the fuller if you, if you have a fuller bladder oh interesting yeah. <laughs> I'm not being <laughs> next time <laughs> but here's a tip like to yeah. Men, yeah. if your lady can achieve an orgasm, where you guys fuck it up is when you, it, when you change the pace mm. uh, and don't change the motion. Motion. Like the girl is saying, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't, don't, don't stop. Don't stop. Any that same pace, that same motion. Let your hands. <laughs> I'm laughing, but they're right. They're right. Stop doing that. Stop doing that. You know, just keep the right, the same pace, the same motion, the same everything. And don't overdo it. Okay. If, you know, if a girl tells you that's right there, then it's right there. And don't go next door. Okay. Don't go, I don't know where. So they're right. So man, stop doing it. And that's a real, that's a real tea right there. You know, and it's so, so, so. So true. Yeah, let your hand show. In addition, uh, when a chick says, I'm about to come, no, 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 you know, thing to build. It's very hard. So when you get there, why spoil it? Because it goes as fast as it's coming. Then you just there, okay. All right. You know, so just listen to these ladies and it is true. Okay? 100% true. Whatever I mean, I say. Yeah. Just maintain. Maintain. Just maintain. Shut up. And then not that she has said. And not even speak. If you're not speaking, you may say the whole thing.
mistakes. We yeah. have. It's okay to talk about it and get your friends with whom you can talk about it. So you don't really feel bad about something and you don't have to. You know, there is no need to, to feel bad about it. It's life. It's it's natural. It's human. So let's talk about it, you know. Kitchen table talk with voices to the internet. You know when people just come and tell us, oh my god, you guys are so open. How do you do it? And I'm like, they're raunchiest channels. That's what we're called. They're raunchiest channels. Oh my god. Oh god. Yeah, it's the same way I can come and say, you discussed some bad manners. He was like, but then he was happy. I'm always like, I'm like, of course, so it is not bad manners. Good manners. <laughs> yes, that, that's how our parents used to call it bad manners. No, it's, I think, and even talking to children, you know, as, as they advance in age, I have a teenager, and as I advise, I, I'm so comfortable talking to my son about these things. I'm very comfortable, but you need to learn how to be comfortable and normalize that because that's how I would rather teach him stuff than um, my son getting some misconceptions and some, you know, bad information from the outside or from his friends. So it's okay, let's normalize it. And I feel it's up to our generation and those just behind us to talk about these things freely. I mean, it's it's fine. Stop. Yeah. Okay, that's not gonna my day. I've been told my mother is at a, is a 33 year old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want you, I want you. This was, this was okay last year. That's actually what you have been. Oh, you want it, yeah. But you know, sometimes you talk about manners. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Consensual and over the age of consensual, consensual sex. And that brings us to the <laughs> end. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments on anything you're saying, as per usual, please leave a comment. Share this episode with anyone who you think mm-hmm. might benefit from it. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up and remember, as per always, please subscribe. Right. It's free, not because it's free. It's also free. Yeah. <laughs> Political correctness. Hey, wait. It's a joke. Political correctness. That is what I meant was not, not to negate. Oh, my father. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you back here next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Oh, my goodness. I love this conversation. It was so fun. You know, I felt like I was just sitting with you girls, like you were my, you know, my friends and everything. So it was really nice uh, getting to hear what you had to say. And I loved it because you kept it to row. Okay. No sugar coating. No sugar coating. And I love that so, so much. So, guys, just to say, make sure if you're, um, if, you, if you don't know this um, YouTube channel, Please go and watch them and subscribe and, you know, and make sure you do the same thing right here because, you know, this is a place to be the best reaction channel. Okay, so guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about it. Let me know if you agree or disagree or if you have another, you know, a different opinion or different things that we should normalize and let's have the discussion in the comments below, guys. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time. It's your girl, Connie. Bye.